Ravana's rampage. After witnessing the destruction of his entire family, Ravana declared that he would enter the battle himself. The mighty ten-headed king could see and kill in every direction. Making his way through the battle, he felled thousands of monkeys and bears, sending a wave of fear through the jungle army. Sugreva and the other generals tried to counterattack, but the cruel demon continued on, striking down anything in his path. Even mighty Hanuman flew toward the kingdom, the demon king, but was sent crashing down by a blazing volley of fiery arrows. Ravana spar spotted Lakshman on the other side of the battlefield and charged straight toward him. He knew Lakshman's death would cause Rama great pain. Fast as lightning, the demon struck Lakshman with a single mighty blow. Rama watched as his brother fell. He immediately ordered his army to retreat as he whisked Lakshman off the battlefield. All of Ravana's heads smiled as he declared a quick victory. Rama's generals rushed toward their fallen leader and began to cry and moan for there was nothing the animals could do for the brave prince as he lay mortally wounded. Leaf of Life Rama laid his hand on Lakshman's face and could feel his brother's life force leaving him. He despaired that the war was lost. Jambavan, ever wise, offered the one solution that might save him in time. Once again, he turned to Hanuman, son of the wind god, and called on his powers of speedy flight. With no time to lose, Hanuman was dispatched. Swiftly, the monkey jumped across the ocean and the entire length of India, all the way to the Himalayas, where natural medicine grew. But upon reaching the mountains, Hanuman was confronted with a big surprise. There were plants everywhere. In fact, the whole mountain was covered with them. Hanuman was confused and didn't know which plant to pick. The sun was setting fast and Lakshman's time was running out. Hanuman began to shake and panic. Mountain of Medicine. Hanuman prayed once more by repeating the mantra of Rama's name. As he did, his body began to expand till once again he was as big as a giant. Ultimately, Hanuman did the only thing he could think of. In a cloud of snow and dirt, the massive Vanara uprooted the entire mountain and balanced it in the palm of his hand. He shot across the sky, racing against time to return to Lakshman. The jungle army cheered as they saw clever Hanuman bringing back an entire mountain of medicine. Before the Vanara could even land, a strong onshore wind blew toward uh, Lakna and across the hillside of medicine, carrying the smell of the life-restoring herbs straight to Lakshman's nose. He revived, and when Hanuman landed, they wasted no time in gathering the herbs to restore him back to perfect health. Rama thanked the shrewd Banara and instructed him to harvest plenty of medicine before returning the mountain to its home. Ravana was astonished to see Rama and Lakshman returning to the battlefield. The demon king was frustrated and, and annoyed that the war had not yet ended. He challenged Rama to a duel once the sun had risen. At first light, the demon king of La Lanka emerged proudly on the battlefield upon a mighty war chariot. Ravana shone as brightly as the sun itself, a truly magnificent warrior, and Rama realized that if the demon had not been his enemy, he would have been, a wor he would have been worthy of worship. But Rama knew that as magnificent as Ravana appeared, his crimes could not go unpunished. With great respect, Rama joined his palms and saluted the demon king with a fiery gaze. A hush fell upon the jungle army as Rama strode past the protection of his generals. Hanuman quickly intercepted him and insisted that Rama sit upon his furry shoulders so he could act as a chariot to ensure that the king could have a fair duel. Rama and Ravana saluted each other and faced off once more, and soon their weapons of war lit up the entire sky. The blue warrior struck down each weapon that Ravana fired until the demon was left with only one weapon in his twenty hands, Shiva's Tarushala, a three-pronged trident, with which Ravana could summon up the destructive flame of Shiva's third eye, a fire that could burn up the universe. Using all of his strength, 
the demon sent the Trushula's flames leaping toward the warrior. Rama knew he would be incinerated by Shiva's fire, so he turned to the magic arrow that had served him so well in the past. He called upon the arrow to become endowed with the Barish Mastara, a divine power with the ability to end all, creation, all of creation, as it was wrought by the creator god, Brahma himself. Rama fired the arrow a moment before the dark flames engulfed him. The earth shook as the two weapons collided. Equally powerful, the mighty weapons canceled each other out, leaving the universe shaken but still in existence. As the dust settled, Rama saw that Ravana was drained of energy and unable to move. Seizing the opportunity, Rama quickly fired ten arrows, slicing off each of Ravana's heads. Undying Demon But instead of dying, the demon simply grew more heads. Rama began to panic, shooting off several more heads, but they all quickly grew back. Hanuman did his best to dodge Ravana's attacks while the blue prince gathered himself. Over the demon's fiendish laughter, Rama heard the voice of Augustia, the sage he had encountered in the forest. The sage spoke in the prince's mind and reminded Rama and that Ravana's heads could never be defeated, for they were an extension of his ego, which had no limits. Ravana had but one weakness, his belly button, which held the nectar of his power. Augustia suggested the prince quickly take aim at this vulnerable spot, for the demon grew stronger as each new head regenerated. Rama summoned up the Babastra once again and charged the arrow with its power. The prince took careful aim and waited for the moment the demon was aligned with the sun before releasing the blazing missile. The arrow of light burned through the sky until it found its mark, striking Ravana directly in the belly button. In a blinding flash, as the arrow struck its target, the demon saw the blue warrior's true identity as the avatar of Vishnu. Ravana realized that he had no protection from a god reborn as a man. This cosmic loophole brought swift justice. The golden arrow had flown with such force that it pushed Ravana's body from the earth high up through all the levels of heaven and back down to the lowest level of hell. The mystical arrow shined with such radiance that it extinguished the shadow of evil from every corner of the three worlds. The universe was silenced as evil was brought to an end for an age.